Hello, welcome back to my second channel. I recently made a video on how to turn any 2D icon, like an image or a PNG or JPEG, into this 3D model in Blender. So this deep dive video will be building upon what we did in that video. So the reason why I want to make this is because in Inkscape, which I've been using a little bit now, it is actually really powerful to explore some of these multicolor options for this uh, trace bitmap path. So what I want to do is I want to take an image and then I want to run it through this process where we can basically break this into layers. So first of all, let's head over to Pixabay and let's search for Tiger. And yeah, I want to do this image. So let's just right click and copy image. And now in Inkscape, I'm just going to go Control V. And it's a little bit too big. So I just want to go File, Document Properties and you can resize to content. So now our document is the same size as the image. And then here's the cool part. If you go to path and then trace bitmap, now you can see you have, if you use this multicolor and you set it to colors, uh, here you can see, you can essentially isolate each color, right? Because you're choosing how many colors you're including with this. So this is essentially the same as creating a GIF if you try that. So I want to do, for example, 15 layers. And I feel like this still looks, yeah, this still looks like the tiger, right? But if you now click apply, Okay, nice. Yeah, I think this is good. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to hide it. And then now we can see the bottom image again. I'm going to delete this and then right click and hide. And I'm not really sure if this is something you have to do, but I, I just like doing it. So now let's go file, save as tiger.svg. And now let's go to Blender. Because now what we can do is that we can import this as an SVG. Import. Uh, SVG. It's probably going to take a while though, because it's 15 layers. Okay, there it is. And here you can see we have all our paths as well. Yeah, this is awesome. So now you can scale this up. Ah, nice. And you can see that there is actually, each layer has its own thing. So what I want to do is I want to, let me just enable screencast keys here. So what I want to do is that I want to just offset each layer. Like I want to take this one and move it up. And I want to take this one and move that up. And then this, and I want to take all of these and move them up so when you view them from the side you can sort of make this forced perspective artwork i think it's going to be really cool but i don't want to manually increase the height of each of these it's going to take forever like imagine doing that all for all of these so i'm going to write a script that does that for me set this to text editor and let's make a new script and let's call this offset on the z-axis and here's the deal i have absolutely no idea how to make a script like this but we can use ChatGPT and just describe our problem and it will write a script for us. Okay, so I'm going to ask ChatGPT, Hey, can you write a Blender script? And so on. Do you think it will do it? <laughs> let's try it. I have no idea if this will work, but let's just try it. Let's copy the code and let's paste it here. Do you need to select everyone? Oh, yes. Okay, nice. Oh my god, this is so cool. If you do orthographic view, you can see that it's a tiger when you view it from the front. And then it's just gibberish down here. Now I want to rotate this. Okay, so now I want to give this some thickness. So let's uh, just select one of these and go to extrude. I'm just going to extrude all of them. That's probably a really bad idea. Okay. Oh, nice. Look at that. This is going to look so cool when you have uh, lighting on it. Hang on. It's probably way too much. Uh, let me see the scene statistics here. Yeah, 5 million faces. That's ridiculous. We have to lower this resolution preview. Let's just set it to 2. Nice. And I think I want to do... I think I also want to give it some bevel. We have to... Oh, we have to set this to 0 first. By the way, I'm holding down Alt when I'm changing these values. And when everything is selected, you can hold down Alt. And then all of these will be affected. Hmm, okay, that's too much. Or that's, it's actually a little bit cool. What if we add an edge split modifier to this? And then copy to select it. That's really cool, actually. I want to apply the scale to these. And then I want to scale them on this axis by 2. And then Alt S. I think this can be really cool if we add some interesting lighting. I'm going straight into cycles for this one, I think. Wow, did you see how fast I changed it to cycles there? That was crazy. <laughs> okay, 
light area. Oh my, look at that. Can you believe this? This is a this is a really cool idea. <laughs> this is fantastic. Here you can see it's a tiger. But if you're over here it's like it's just these details, right? That is a really easy way to just get some really cool uh, depth. Is this possible? Okay, I'm going to make a camera now. Camera. Okay, so it's going to make sense that we're going to start off axis. So we're first viewing this like from here. Something like this. It would be so cool if it just said tiger here. But that's uh, for the next video, I guess. So the camera starts here. Rotation. And then we get to the end. And then we can see the tiger. That's nice. I think we have to move the camera further back and then zoom in. Yeah, this is not straight on. So if it's like this. That's, I like that. Yeah, I think I like that a lot. And then if you, maybe we should add a spotlight here. I just want to see what this looks like. If we have like this warm, something warm coming in from the side. Oh my God, it looks a lot cooler without the light. Look at this. You can't even tell what this is. And then you're like, Oh, it's a tiger. This looks like an art installation. The problem with this deep dive channel is that whenever I get a little bit more advanced than what I usually do, I just stop talking. And I feel like this channel is for people who want to see a little bit more advanced stuff, you know? Oh, wait, it shouldn't be a spotlight. It should be an aerial light. Yeah, look at this. Um, this is not that stupid, actually. And then it has to spread, like, really low. And then it's a rectangle. And then... This this could be something. That it's... It's just this... This static light from behind. I, I feel like I have to try and add some volumetric here. Every project just uh, in always needs that. I'm really curious to see how this will end up in an actual render. Let's just do a still image of this. Yeah, it's going to take forever to render it, but I think it could be cool. Yeah, so I think I want to add some depth of field to this as well. Oh, that looks really cool when you have this shallow depth of field at the end there. Look at this, this black tiger's eyes. Is that, that's like black. Hang on, let me actually just add some nodes here because I just want to see this with the... Uh... Yeah, this is... Wow, this is really cool. I feel like I'm... I might just stop there, you know? The volumetric is there, the... the I feel like this is like a super simple concept. That is coming together now. Maybe some more spread is actually a little bit pretty. I think that's prettier. It's not that hard. This just feels so glowing and I really like it. Look at these eyes. They feel so alive. They feel almost more... No, okay, they don't. <laughs> but they feel really alive. <laughs> I think I, uh, I, think I want to start the final render. So yeah, I hope this is a valuable workflow for you. Let me know what you think. And uh, maybe you can even share some of your creations on Discord if you made something like this. Thanks for watching.